Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today, we're moving on to part three of our Flat Field Correction Issues series. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to get the linear range of our camera, because we need to be able to image our flats within the linear range, but we're also gonna use that information in part four in order to finally get our image corrected properly and make it into a workable image to process with. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn how to find the linear range of our camera. If you've been following along with this series, then you'll recall from part two, the general orders of flat frames. And one of those general orders is your flat frames must be taken within the camera sensor's linear range. Basically, what the camera sensor's linear range is, is the range at which the input signal is directly proportional to the output signal. And it's important to take your flat frames within the camera sensor's linear range, because if you are in the non-linear range, then the output signal essentially is distorted because it is not proportional to the input signal. And this can cause issues with properly calibrating your flat frames. So the easiest way to get the linear range of your camera is to look at the uh, camera's manufacturer website and get the specs from there. But sometimes that's just not possible. Thankfully though, there is a very easy way to capture this information. And that's what we're gonna go through right now because in part four, we're gonna use the range that we're about to discover to fine tune the flat frame to work with your light frame. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set my flat panel for the average operating range that I use it at. In this case, 8%. I'm gonna go over to the imaging tab and I'm gonna start with one second exposures. And I'm going to gradually increase the exposure while keeping my flat panel at a consistent brightness. What I'm going to do is increase my exposures by 0.5 second. I'm gonna take the mean value of each exposure and I'm going to jot it down on a notepad. And then we're gonna use this information in a moment. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm at one second exposure. I'm gonna take the exposure. And then I'm gonna take the mean value, in this case, 3289, and I'm going to log it on my notepad. Then I'll go ahead and increase my exposure to 1.5 second, take another exposure, and then I'm going to log the mean value, in this case, 5585. And I'll keep going in this manner until I completely saturate the pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this done, and then I'll bring you back as soon as I'm done. Now, while this is running, I just wanted to go over a couple of things here. We're not looking for precision with this. We're, we're more so looking for a range, a range of ADU values that we can work with with our flat frames in order to properly calibrate our light frames. Now, we went over overcorrection and undercorrection in part two. And we need to be able to adjust the bright areas and the dim areas of the flat frames. And there's a way to do it without having to retake your flat frames. In fact, I've mentioned, you don't really need to overthink it. Generally speaking, 25,000 ADU is going to get you right where you need to be. But sometimes it needs a little bit of help. So now we've captured all of our exposures. 
starting with one second and increasing half a second each time until we saturated the pixels. And then we went ahead for each exposure, took the mean ADU value associated, and jotted them all down, starting with one second and increasing half a second until we went to saturation. Now we can take these ADU values and we can plot them on a graph and compare them exposure time with associated ADU value. But more than likely, that graph visually will look perfectly linear, even though it's not, which means that we have to do some math in order to figure out where this falls out of the linear state. But we can do this the easy way. We're not after scientific data. We're just here to capture the beauty of the universe. So let's make this easy. I went ahead and I created a little sentence here. I need to image my flat calibration frames within the linear range of my camera. Can you please analyze the following ADU values for my camera and tell me when they become nonlinear? And then I went ahead and pasted all of my ADU values in here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go into our favorite web browser and go to google.com. We're going to go ahead and type in chat GPT. You should see it pop up. And if you don't, just keep typing and then you will. We'll go ahead and click chat GPT. And we're going to go to chat GPT open AI. We'll go to start now, and then we'll stay logged out. Go ahead and paste that sentence that we just copied from here. And then we'll go ahead and hit enter. And ChatGPT will go ahead and analyze all of those ADU values, and then let you know where your sensor starts falling out of the linear range. Now, again, this isn't the most accurate way. It's just giving us a range. That's all we're really looking for is just a range that we can work in. And we can even see the math that ChatGPT does. And as we can see here, there's a significant drop off between uh, 42,347 ADU and 43,622 ADU. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is not go above 42,347 ADU because this is where the differences really start declining and dropping off. So again, this just gives us a range that we can work with. So make sure to stay tuned because we're gonna use this information right here in order to correct the flat field correction issue that we're facing and make it into a workable image. So I hope that you found this useful, and if you did and wanna help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support really helps me bring you more content. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Do you know where your linear drop off is? Did you learn anything new? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.